Hello everyone, my name is Xu Hui Ho from UC San Diego and I'm presenting long tail anomaly detection with learnable class names. This work is a collaboration with Guan Chen from Mitsubishi Electric Research Laboratory, Merrill, and New Nova Sansolas from UC San Diego. Industrial anomaly detection is an important topic for manufacturing and contains two tasks. The first task is anomaly detection, which classify whether the input image contains defect. The second is anomaly segmentation, which aims to segment the defect region. Since anomaly detection has a long history, fireworks have superior performance in both anomaly detection and segmentation. For example, below shows the performance on the MVTAC dataset, which are kind of saturated. However, fireworks have several drawbacks. First, they use N models for N different object categories. For example, three models are used for three different object categories. Ideally, we would like to have one model to detect defects for all the categories. Second, they assume that large number of normal data are available and the distributions across category is balanced. However, in the real world, this might not be the case due to, for example, export control, where the training examples of certain classes is less, is less than the others. Finally, some powers assume that the class names of the objects is known and also meaningful, which is not true in the real world application. For example, when we are looking at this image from the bottle class of MVTech, we might not describe it as a bottle. Furthermore, knowing the class name PCB1 and PCB2 does not help us dis distinguish what PCB this is. Since the long tail settings has never been studied in the anomaly detection literature, we first proposed several new long tail dataset splits. Each split is controlled by the imbalance type and also the class imbalance factor beta, which is the ratio between the maximum number of class sample divided by the minimum number of class sample. The sample distributions of the splits is shown on the left. On the right, we show that the performance of the state of the R model degrades as the number of samples decreases. To address this problem, we propose a novel training pipeline called LTAD, which contains two phases. In phase one, LTAD learns to synthesize feature for the tail classes, while in phase two, LTAD is trained to predict the anomaly map using either the real feature or the synthesized feature. For implementation, we use a pre-trained visual language model, Align, which aligns the image and text to the same feature space. With Align, we propose a text conditional variation autoencoder, or VAE architecture, for synthesizing the feature in phase one. Given an image, the fixed image encoder from Align first extracts the feature. A trainable image decoder is learned to synthesize the feature in a VAE style. Since the class name is unknown, we learn our pseudo class name as C for each category C. And SC is a learnable parameter which optimize together with the decoder. Overall, we use the MSE loss to minimize the reconstruction difference between the encoder feature and the decoder feature and we also use the KL divergence loss to regularize the data and distribution. After phase one is trained, we then train phase two, which contains two modules, including the semantic AD modules on the top and also the, the reconstruction modules or RM modules on the bottom. The input of these, uh, the input of phase two is a normal patch PI, PIN and which can be the real feature or the synthesized feature from phase one. Since only normal patch feature PIN is available during training, noise is then added to the normal P, uh, to the normal feature to create the abnormal feature PIA. We then train the reconstruction modules to map the input feature to the normal feature. The reconstruction modules is implemented with a transformer and then we can use the MSE loss to, to, to minimize the difference between the reconstruction and the input during training. In addition to the reconstruction modules, 
we also train the semantic AD modules. The semantic AD modules first map the patch feature P to the text space, and then the projection uh, projected feature is denoted as PI hat. The learn pseudo class M as C is then concatenated with the normal prompt VN and also the abnormal prompt VA. For example, the normal prompt can be the phrase of a normal of, and then the abnormal prompt can be the phrase of a broken of. <clears throat> the concatenated phrases are then passed to the aligned text encoder and then get to get the normal text feature TNC and also the abnormal text feature TAC. After we compute the normal and abnormal text feature, we can then use them to classify whether the patch is defective or not. This is done by computing similarity score between the abnormal uh, text feature and also the input patch. During training, if the input patch is the pseudo anomaly patch, the ground truth is one, and then the binary cross entropy loss is applied on each patch for training. During test time, we drop the decoder in phase one. Given an image, we first um, extract the feature and pass it to the reconstruction modules to get the reconstruction output. The reconstruction anomaly score of a patch PI is the reconstruction difference. So when the patch is normal, the, no the anomaly score is small. The patch is also passed to the semantic AD modules to measure the semantic anomaly score. Since we have the anomaly score from the semantic AD modules and the reconstruction modules, we then fuse these scores to get the final anomaly score. For experiments, we consider three data set with different long tail configurations. As shown below, these data set contains different objects and textures with or without defects. We follow the standard settings and only use the normal images during training, which means that the model never sees the abnormal image during training. The AURC matrix is used for the anomaly detection and also the segmentation task. Take the DAGN dataset, for example, our method in purple bar outperformed all the baselines on different imbalance type and, imb and imbalance factor ranging from 50 to 500. Moreover, when comparing the red bar and the purple bar, we find that adding the semantic AD modules always improve the performance. Here we show some visualizations of the proposed method, the baselines and also the ground truth. The leftmost images um, is the input image to the system, which can be the normal image or a defective image. The Y region in the ground truth max then shows the defective region. As we can see, the baseline prediction is more spread out and our method can accurately localize the defect. Thank you for listening. Please visit our paper website for more details.